Praise God. Hallelujah. The presence of God is in this place. Amen. Tell your neighbor, you came to the right place. Praise the Lord. Today is Healing Sunday. Amen. And I have faith for you that if you are sick in body, today's your day of healing. Amen. I want you to extend your faith and rank it up to a place to receive. Don't think anything lower than full, complete restoration and healing. Whatever the devil has done, whatever obstacles you've gone through, whatever pains and sicknesses you've been dealing been with, don't lower your faith to an acceptance of something that's below complete restoration in Jesus' name. I was watching a, a video of one man of God. This woman came into one of the services. Her leg had been crushed in a terrible accident. But she came believing that God can heal her. And the man of God asked her, what do you believe in God for? And she says, I'm believing God for a new bone in my leg. And he said, do you believe that God can provide you a new bone? She wasn't just asking for, for God to strengthen the bone, to be able to restore her, 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 her ability to walk. She was believing for complete restoration. That whatever was missing, God was going to put it in. And she was a woman of faith. The man of God was a, woman, was a man of faith. And when he put his hands upon her, upon her, the anointing of God came upon her and that new bone began to grow inside of her leg. She stood up, began to walk, began to jump, began to run, completely healed from the top of her head to the sole of her feet. That's the God we serve. Amen. All things are possible with God. Amen. And it doesn't matter if you got a bad report. Maybe you got a bad report. The doctor says that you got cancer. I want you to believe God today that that cancer got to go in Jesus' name. Amen? It has to go. Hallelujah. Don't receive it. We reject it. We cast it off in the name of Jesus. You're stronger than every attack of the devil. The Bible says Jesus came to destroy all the works of the devil. Amen. That he bore on our body all sicknesses and diseases that his body was broken so that our body can be made whole amen someone says well pastor that's for eternity no that's for now i don't have this body in eternity i'm not sick in eternity i might be dealing with sicknesses and diseases here in this world because this body it, it's, it's it's moving to a day of death so we will break down but as it breaks down, God brings strength. And it doesn't mean that this body's going to live forever, but it doesn't, have to, it doesn't mean that you have to be in this body sick. Amen. When it's your time to go, this is my prayer for every one of you. When it's your time to go, it's not because you're sick and you have diseases and some doctor's saying you only have moments to live. No, when it's your time to go, it's because God says, okay, son, okay, daughter, time to come and be with me. And you're going to call all your family around and you're going to tell them, boys, girls, I just want to, I want to pray over you, bless you. I love you. I'm going home. Amen. And you give up the ghost. Amen. Praise the Lord. Not because of sickness and disease. The Bible says with long life, you'll be satisfied. Amen. That's your promise. That's what the word of God says for you. Claim it in Jesus name. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, I want to talk to you about, the, about good medicine, amen? If you can, go with me to Matthew chapter 8. Matthew chapter 8. Today's your day of healing, amen? Say, today is my day of healing in Jesus' name. Matthew chapter 8. We're going to begin in verse 5. It says, now when Jesus had entered Capernaum, a centurion came to him, pleading with him, saying, Lord, my servant is lying at home, paralyzed, dreadful, dreadfully tormented. And Jesus said to him, I will come and heal him. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that you should come under my roof, but only speak a word and my servant will be healed. For I also 
am a man under authority, having soldiers under me, and I say to this one, go, and he goes. And to another, come, and he comes. And to my servant, do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard it, he marveled and said to those who followed, Surely I say to you, I have not found such great faith, not even in Israel. Verse 13, then Jesus said to the centurion, go your way, and as you have believed, so let it be done for you. And his servant was healed that same hour. The Bible says that he has sent his word and healed, healed them and delivered them from their destructions. The word of God is good medicine. The word of God is good medicine. It has the power to heal your body. And it also has the power to deliver you from whatever destruction might be heading your way. Some people say, well, I don't know what God has done for me. Uh, I don't know if God has, has delivered me from any destruction. Thank God you don't know. There might be some things that were getting ready to take place in your life that you were heading to certain destruction. But the Lord has sent his word to deliver you from that destruction. And thank God for his deliverance when we do go through whatever troubles we might go. But thank God that he's delivered us from the things we don't even know about. That time you were held up in a certain place, you know, you're complaining at the supermarket. The line's too big. You were there too long. But then on your way home, you notice that there was this terrible accident on the freeway. How God spared you from going there just because he loves you. Just because his word is upon your life. Amen. How, how someone was getting ready to do something terrible in a certain area, but the Lord kept you from going to that area. Amen. See, there's deliverance that's taking place all around us. Amen. And you might say, well, pastor, you know, I've never seen it with your eyes. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Thank God that he took care of you yesterday. He's faithful, amen? So the word of God, it's medicine. It brings strength not only to your spirit, man, but it brings strength to your body, amen? Now, the word of God is good medicine. We have to have faith in the word of God. That centurion, when he went to Jesus to tell him about what was going on with this servant, paralyzed servant, he, he showed up, he let his complaint be known to Jesus. He said, my servant, he's sick, he's paralyzed, he needs healing. Jesus says, I will go with you. But the centurion had faith. Not that Jesus was going to show up and bring healing. The centurion had faith that if Jesus just spoke the word and sent the word, that word will have enough power and authority to bring healing to his servant. So he stopped the man. He said, he said stop Jesus, Jesus. You don't have to go all the way to my house. Just send forth your word. Jesus saw the faith that this man had. A lot of times we're, we're, we're waiting for the certain man of God to pray over us. We're waiting for a certain anointing, a certain revival. I can tell you people that have traveled the whole country and the whole world going from one man of God to another man of God, one woman of God to another woman of God, just hoping that one prayer will work. It's not about the prayer of a man. It's about having faith in God. And having faith in his word, that his word is the final authority for your life. God said it, it is done. The Bible says the entrance of his word is light. The word of God is the truth and the Bible says the truth sets us free. 
When someone grabs a hold of the word of God, that the word of God is, is, is it, it, it's, it's true, it's perfect, it has power to deliver, power to heal. They begin to apply it upon their life like good medicine. And next thing you know, whatever sickness and diseases or weaknesses that are upon their body, God begins to strengthen them in that area. Healing begins to happen. Healing begins to flow. Amen. Faith caused that centurion to go to Jesus and to ask him for a word of healing. Amen. The word has a power to heal, to deliver from all the power of death. The word of God has a power to bring strength to your marriage, strength to your finances, strength to your mind, strength to your body. The word of God is, has all the power to destroy all the works of the devil. Every operation of death, God's word has the power to, to destroy those works. My friend right here, he was telling me a couple of weeks ago he came up asked for a prayer. I, asked, I said, what was going on? He said, well, the other night I had a severe sharp pain in my chest and it was, yeah, I thought maybe I'll just lay down and, and take a nap and it'll go away, but it didn't go away. And I began to remember, remember how you were preaching, how the believer will lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. And I put my hand upon my own chest and I began to speak to my body. I said, heart, you are healed in Jesus name. Pain, you got to go. And he began to apply the medicine of the word of God to himself. And he said that as he began to apply the medicine of the word of God to himself, as he began to speak to his body, that pain began to go. And he came to talk to me. He said, I just want you to pray over me. So I prayed over him. He went to the doctors. He told the doctor, he said, I had this severe pain. And, and he told him what happened. The doctor put him in all those machines to check the heart. Got the results, went to, went to my brother and says, well, there is nothing wrong with your heart. Amen. And then began to check all his levels, began to check his blood pressure because my brother had, had high blood pressure. But the doctor says, well, now your blood pressure is now down low. And began to, did they check your sugars too, brother? Did those things go down too? And are you losing weight? Kind of, sort of. That's the next thing in line. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> What's changed? He's in every service. He's going to Bible school. He's hearing the word of God. Medicine is being applied to his life. Rick, stand up. You all know Rick. He's active in every aspect of ministry in the church. I can't get him to go home. I said, don't your wife miss you? And then his wife shows up to church and she won't go home either. <laughs> Rick was watching the program, Victory in the Valley on the air. He was depressed. He was suicidal. He was unhealthy. I think even the doctors wanted to, to, uh, to put him in the institution. They did. Wow. His body was being broken. And the word of God came to him that early morning at 530 in the morning. Some crazy preacher from Faith Pleases God was speaking God's word. And he began to listen to it. God began to touch his life. God began to change his life. Not only did God set him free from suicide, God set him free from depression, God set him free from poverty, God set him free from, from all, from, from sicknesses and diseases. God saved him, God saved his wife, God saved his children, God saved his mama, God saved his family. And God saving the city through the work that the Lord is using him to do. And how much weight have you lost? He lost 47 pounds. God bless you, sir. Pastor Kevin, what, what, you know, what kind of, what kind of exercise did you do? I, I just got the word of God and I started applying it. That's it. A little dab will do you. You get the word of God and you start applying it. You start adding it to your life. 
You start speaking it, you start believing, you start hearing it, and next thing you know, things start to change. Pastor, there's so much anger in my house. My, 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 my children are always fighting. Me and my, my husband or me and my wife are always fighting. Is there any word there? You know, there's a lot, there's a lot of different music. But is any of it anointed music? There's a lot of words being spoken there, but is any of it God's word? You know, where there's no word, there's darkness. But the word of God shows up. The Bible talks about the word as light. And when light shows up, where does the darkness go? I don't know, but it goes. And it cannot stay. Darkness never overcomes the light. Light always overcomes the darkness. And when you allow the word of God to be spoken in your home, watch how that darkness has to go. Watch how the devils get so beaten up they leave your house. Amen. So the word of God is medicine. Amen. Proverbs chapter 4. Proverbs chapter 4. Verse 20 says, my son, give attention to, to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. For they are life to those who find them. And health to all their flesh. In the Hebrew, in the Hebrew that word health, it actually means medicine. It's medicine to all your flesh. Amen. Now, there are many people that believe in the power of God's word. But it's not just about believing in the power of God's word. You have to receive God's word. There's a lot of people that believe in the power of God. And they believe in the power of his word. But they don't know what God's word is. They don't know what God has promised them. They don't know what Jesus has done for them. I believe, I believe, but what do you believe? Do you have the word? If you're going through a situation or you're going through a season, don't just run for prayer. Get yourself in the word of God and get a word for your life. You need something to hold on to you need a foundation that you can walk on on your way to victory. There are a lot of people that get sick and they, they, they want prayer and they come and that's wonderful. But the, in the future, that devil's going to try to come and put sickness again upon your life in another way. The same power that brings healing for you today, it could, it's the same power that brings healing for your life tomorrow as well. You could be running from church to church and person to person and preacher to preacher or you could begin to grab the word and store it up in your heart so that when that attack comes, you can resist that devil with the word of God. Amen. Jesus, when he went into the wilderness, here Jesus is the son of the most high God being tempted by the devil. The devil comes to him with temptation after temptation. Jesus came against every temptation, not with who he was. Don't you know who I am? I'm Jesus, the son of the most high God. How dare you devil talk to me that way? But every time the devil came with a temptation, Jesus said, it is written, it is written, it is written. Have you received an answer from God's word for your situation? Have you read the word of God and have you stored it up in your heart? Have you meditated upon, meditated upon it day and night? Have you spoken it from your lips? I, I, I love to say this. There's no excuse for spiritual laziness. You're putting yourself in a place of destruction if you don't allow God's word to become alive inside of you. You got to eat it daily. You got to meditate on it. You got to believe it. You got to speak it. Because the world will tell you about all the things that you cannot do, but God will tell you about all the things you can do. And you're going to have to choose which one you're going to believe. What the world is telling you, what you can't do, or what God says you can do. Amen. God's word is not a respecter of person. God's word is not just for Kevin Ortiz because he's so handsome and so good looking. 
It doesn't matter who you are. If you get God's word, God's word will work for you as well as it works for me and even better for you. God's word is not a respect of a person. Anyone who gets God's word and begins to apply it upon their life gets to reap the fruits of the word of God. Amen. It's yours in Jesus' name. Tell your neighbor, God's blessings are mine. So we must take it according to the direction for it, for it to be effective in our life. We must grab a hold of God's word and put it into, into practice and allow it to take us into that direction that, it, that, that it's leading us. Amen? It's the truth and it sets us free. Now, in Proverbs chapter 4, we're there. Verse 20, it says, My son, give attention to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them, keep them in the midst of your heart. See, that's how, that's, that's how we begin to, to apply God's word. We must hear. We must believe. We must keep the word of God before us. We must store them in our heart. Why are we storing it? Because it's provision for the future. It's, provo it's provision for the next time we go through a situation. It's provision next time we are, we are ministering to someone else who's going through a situation. It's an answer to a problem. So we store it. We store it every day. We store it every day. We're hearing it every day. We're receiving it every day. We're storing it. Why? Because the more we store it, the stronger we get. The more we speak it, the stronger we get. We become, he we become instruments that God uses to, to bring healing to others. Amen. I remember when I st just started as pastor. You know, I'd been pastor maybe about a year. And there was a person in the church that had a severe heart attack. His wife called me up. She said, Pastor, my, my husband had a heart attack. Doctor is, is telling us to get ready for him to pass away. His heart doesn't work anymore. It's ripped. Only 20% of the functions of the heart are working correctly. And the only way he could survive is if he had a new heart. But we can't give him a heart transplant because we can't make, he can't make it to Houston where they do those operations. So they loaded him up with a bunch of drugs. And they left them there to die. I just become pastor. And I started to think about myself. Started thinking, man, I'm a young minister. This is a big problem. I started thinking, oh, maybe I'm going to go over there. And see, what can I tell the people as they're preparing for their husband, their father to die? I started thinking about all these wonderful comforting scriptures that bring consolation as their loved one is on their deathbed. Being to think, okay, first it starts off with just a little bit of peace. And then we're going to go to the grave, the funeral home. And start getting myself prepared to be a minister in the time of their father dying. See, that was my thoughts. But then I stopped myself and I asked the Lord, I said, Lord, what do I have for these people? And God said, you have my word. And immediately I started thinking, that's more than enough. Because I remember in God's word, in Mark chapter 16, it says that when I preach the gospel, that the believer will lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. I couldn't find a scripture that says the pastor will go to the people and bring them comfort in the time of death. If I would have saw that one, I might have used it. And I began to look at myself and I said, wait a minute, I'm a believer. I believe in the power of God. And then I began to look down and say, wow, I got hands. I'm equipped for this job. I believe and I got hands. How many believers are there? Let me see your hands. Oh, you're ready. The believer will lay hands upon the sick and they shall recover. You are just as anointed as I am. Because it's not about me. It's not about anything about myself. It's all about the word of God. So I went to that hospital. And I went into the ICU where he was. And the guy was all puffed up full of all sorts of, of drugs in a coma. And I put my hand upon his heart. 
And I spoke in the name of Jesus a new heart because that's what he needed. In Jesus' name, I laid my hands upon him and I put my faith in God. Because in front of me, it looked like death. But God's word speaks life. So I chose to believe God's word and I acted upon the word of God. I walked out of that hospital. The next day, the wife called me up. She said, Pastor, you won't believe it. And I said, try me. She said, the doctor just came into the room. He says, he don't know what happened, but they checked his heart. And it's as if he has a brand new heart. There's no scar tissue. The heart's working perfectly. They said it's a miracle. Amen. See, that's our God. Our God knows how to bring things that are dead back to life again. He knows how to bring, he knows how to give new limbs. He knows how to restore bodies. Legs that don't work. Listen, don't, don't even accept some, some, some of you here, your bones are starting to hurt. Knees are spark, starting to hurt. Don't accept that. Don't accept it. If, if, if your legs are starting to hurt and they, they, they didn't hurt before, you know what? Rebuke it in the name of Jesus. Begin to confess I'm healed in Jesus' name. Some, some of you, the devil might be, might be working on trying, you know, you're starting to forget things. Your mind's not working as sharp as it used to. Don't accept that. Oh, pastor, that's what happens when you get old. You're not old. Bible, Bible says you can live up to 120 years. Are you 120 years? When you're 120 years, I'll call you old. Amen? Hallelujah. Pastor, I'm 60 years old. Oh, you're midlife. You've got another half to go. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. The word of God says, with long life, you will be satisfied. Usually when I go to pray for someone who, who it looks like they're on the deathbed, I ask them, are you satisfied? Because if you're not satisfied, then I'm going to call you back. Amen. But if you're satisfied, I'll, I won't call you back. Are you kidding me? I'm jealous. You're in the arms of Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. But God knows how to call dead things back to life again. Legs that don't work, they'll begin to work again in Jesus' name. Body parts that might be missing, I believe we're going to see arms grow back in Jesus' name. Legs grow back in Jesus' name. How many of y'all believe with me? You know, I was thinking about this the other day. You know, we see incredible miracles all over. I see incredible miracles here in this church, but a lot of times you, you see a lot of unique miracles on the field. You know, I, t I told you a testimony about this one you know, little boy who mom, his mom brought him to, the, to the, the service, the crusade that we had. He was, the little boy was brain damaged. Doctor says he'll never be in his right mind. And in the service, the Lord healed him. But I started thinking about this the other day. I started saying, you know, we have such an incredible uh, medical services in the United States. We're really blessed. When you go outside of this country and you see how the rest, rest of the world lives, you will, you will thank God that God has allowed us to live in this country. But they don't have those things over there. And a lot of times we accept our fate. Listen, I, I thank God for medicine. I'm not telling you never go to medicine. I, I thank God for medicine. Amen? But God's word is a medicine too. And it's the best medicine. Amen? I started to, to, to just pray a little bit. I said, there's so many soldiers that are coming home broken and wounded. I think we as a church need to begin to pray for them as well. I want to see miracles happen in their bodies. Maybe they, 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 some of their bodies have been torn up by some sort of war. I want, to, I want to begin to believe God for restoration upon them. Amen? The same God that has brought miracles into, inside our life will be the same God that will bring miracles to their life. Amen? So let's just believe together that we're going to see arms grow back in Jesus' name.
Then we'll begin to see legs grow back in Jesus. We'll begin to see skin become clean in Jesus' name. Jesus can do it. Amen? Tell your neighbor, Jesus can do it. Amen? Let's just begin to believe together. Amen? And as we begin to pray for others, we're going to see that they're going to come with faith and that we're going to be able to bring healing to them by the power of Jesus. Amen? By the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen? Tell your neighbor, nothing's impossible with God. I remember my father, uh, when he started in ministry, he's so funny, you know, my dad, because I, I learned, we, a lot of us have learned so much by example. And my father began to testify and how when he began to pray for the sick, the first, the first nine people he prayed for, they all passed away. Talk about, uh, you know, losing faith, amen? <laughs> but the first nine people he prayed for, they, 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 they passed away. But that didn't discourage them because God's word is true. Amen. And the Lord was rising up his faith. Amen. Someone said, well, pastor, what if you pray for someone and they don't, they don't get healed? Yes, but what if they do? I just look at that. I don't look at the, they're not. I look at they are. Amen. And I believe the story goes that this mama called my father, I think it was a mother, because this one man had gone in a terrible accident, an electrician, and the, the electricity exploded on him. And he went, you know, of course, the mama called my father, he was in the, the hospital, and when my father showed up there where he was supposed to be at, there was just a guy lying down on the bed with a blanket sheet over his head and no one else in the room. So my father walked in there and stuck his hand underneath the sheet and began to speak life over that body. I believe that's how the story goes. And he finished his prayer and went home. And then later on he they started getting in touch with my father because that man who had died got back up and was healed. Hallelujah. Amen. You, Benny, stand up. That's him. Stay standing, Benny. How long? How many years ago that happened? 15? 15 years ago that happened. Praise the Lord. God bless you, Benny. Love you. <laughs> God's word is medicine good medicine amen if God can bring back Benny Flores from death God can make your legs work again God can make your heart work again God can heal your marriage God can deliver you from addictions Nothing impossible with God. Amen. He sent his word and healed us. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I don't think I could preach anymore after that. Amen. I want to ask the pastors to come on up to the front. And I want to ask everyone to stand on your feet. Praise the Lord. God's healing virtue is in this place. Everyone close your eyes. Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you that you brought your people here to receive your word. And Lord Jesus, there, there are some here that are not right with you, that have fallen away, that they, they've walked away from their relationship with you. But Lord, we know that you're calling them back home. 
Father God, I pray that you reveal yourself to them and that they will make them so, that they will invite you to be their Lord and Savior, Lord Jesus. That today is their day of salvation. In Jesus' name. Now with head, every eye closed, if you've never given your heart to Jesus Christ and today you really want to become born again, you want to be part of the family of God, it's a simple prayer that we pray together. But all heaven is listening. This is the reason why we preach. This is the reason why God moves to bring salvation to your life. If you're not right with God and today you want to ask the Lord to forgive you of all your sins, you're ready to come on home and be a part of the family of God. If that's you right now, I want you to lift up your, your right hand so only I can see you. God bless 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 you. Praise God. God bless you. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Put it up high. Five more seconds. That's all. Praise God. God bless you. I see you all. Now heaven saw you. Put your hands down. Now I want everyone to say this prayer. And as we do, we're going to say it in faith. Amen. Your heavenly father is listening. Repeat after me. Lord Jesus, forgive me of all my sins come inside my heart change my life I want to live for you Father God I'm coming home use me for your glory teach me send your spirit fill me with your Holy Ghost I'm born again I'm a child of God and I'm on my way to heaven in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. I believe we're family. All you gave your heart to Jesus, you just did something that I did a long time ago. And I welcome you into the family of God. Keep on coming and hearing the word of God. It's going to change your life. Little by little, the word of God will be applied like medicine and bring transformation to every area. My father would always say this, it gets gooder and gooder, amen? And the more God's word comes upon your life, the better it gets, amen? So I encourage you to keep on going. You have a place that, that loves you. We are believing God for big things for you. This is your house, amen? Now I believe we're family here and we're gonna use our faith together. In just a moment, I'm going to invite all those who are sick to come up to the front. And our pastors are here ready to pray heaven down upon you. And when you come, I want you to believe God that it's not a hand of a, a normal person that's standing before you. But by faith, it's the hand of Jesus as if Jesus is praying over you. The same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in these men and these women that are going to pray for you today. Have faith in God. And I want you to believe that when they put their hand upon you, that sickness is going to go in Jesus' name. That problem is going to leave in Jesus' name. I want you to receive whatever healing you need. Amen. But everyone here, we're in the household of God. We're the family of faith. And just you standing, I want you to be interceding on their behalf. I want you to be praying right where you're at that God will do a work, that God will do a miracle for them in Jesus name amen praise the Lord I tell you the anointing of God is here it's beautiful if you would like prayer I want you to make your way out of your chair and come meet us in the front and believe God for your healing in Jesus name
lift up your hands high to heaven just begin to worship father we thank you for the miracles we thank you father for restoring bodies for changing lives father god we thank you, Father God, that you bring in strength to the bones that were weak. You bring in strength to the muscles that were weak. Lord, that from the top of their head to the sole of their feet, the body is being restored in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father God, for delivering them from any addictions, Father God. We thank you, Father God, that you bring in answers to their problems, Father, that the wisdom of God is coming upon them right now in Jesus' name. We worship you, Lord. You are wonderful. You are awesome. You are mighty. You are powerful. We love you so much, Lord Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Father God, for stretching forth your hand and healing your people. Thank you, Father God, for revealing your spirit unto your people and teaching us your ways. Thank you, Father God, for moving in our life. Let's worship and worship. Lift up your hands, heaven.